Hey guys, it's great to be back and today we're going to be looking at four more amazing tensile structures and how to make them. Before we begin, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, it really helps me to keep making these videos. That being said, let's get started. So let's start off by going into here and getting ourselves a cylinder and place it at the center and make a radius of about one point, actually point one. Let's bring it up to a height of about 10, like so. And now let's make a copy of this to the side on about 10 meters. Click it there, enter. And now let's copy these two to the, to the other side, also about 10 meters, and enter again. And now with your, with your poles set up, let's get ourselves a surface which will be our, our, our cloth. I'm gonna place a point at the center there. go two three four okay and that basically set up sets up our rhino elements now going into grasshopper I'm gonna place in a surface and now and, and I will set our cloth there and now I will give myself a uh, mesh surface there it is let's bring it into there and as for the, the counts, I'm going to start off with about uh, 20 on the number slider and then place these values into the U and V counts, like so. Coming down here, I'm going to get myself an explode, bring it into, into there so that we can extract our, our four segments. And now we can join them, join curves like this. And uh, in this case, we can now extract also the area. We can use either this output or this one up here. And uh, now we want to, to extract the centroid so that, so that we can get our uh, tense point. So let's bring it into, into there. We can see it all already up here. But we, we want this to be mobile, so I just place in a Z value. And in this case, I'm going to place in a number slider with a value of about 10 connect it into there and now bring this to about five five looks about right and uh, once uh, that's done we can we, we can come back here I'm gonna get myself uh, naked vertices you noticed I have two because I have both kangaroo and uh, kangaroo two and uh, now to make some connections down down here I'm gonna get myself a uh, closest Point, not closest points, but only point, single. And I will set my geometry into the into the point here. And in this case, we we want the the uh, coded points into the cloud input, like so. Next up, let's get ourselves an anchor. And I will bring my closest point into here and the geometry into the target. Okay. Now we can copy these down to here now. And um, the next thing I want to get is a divide curve, so th so that we can get the uh, edges here to uh, properly pin our tent. And I I want to get our new main curve here. And as for the the count, the way I approach this is uh, we have four sides here, so I will multiply this count by four. So I'm going to bring this value into here, double dash. Four, connect it into there and now bring it into the count like so perfect you you can see that all the, the points on these uh, divides here they match the grid system from the mesh surface now we can bring our point into this point here and in this case we want to use our naked points into our cloud of course then we can pick up our points here and bring it into the target like this Okay, now we have two of the components we need for our kangaroo uh, bouncy solver. Next up, we will also be needing a show, which we will connect with our mesh. I'm gonna bring this down a little bit here. And now, last but not least, we're gonna need a uh, mesh length. Mesh length. Mm. I usually go by the images, so in this case, what we want are edge lengths. 
let's bring in our mesh. And now for the length factor, I'm gonna place an end number slider of 1.000. Connect it into the length factor there. And now we have all the four elements we, we will need. I will group them up nicely. I'm gonna name these uh, kangaroo elements. And of course, now let's get ourselves our bouncy solver. And before we set up our goal objects, I'm gonna get myself a button, bring it into the reset part, and to control the on and off function, I'm gonna go for boolean toggle. Bring it into to, uh, there. And now what will show up here might be a bit a bit messy, so to clean that up, I'm gonna get myself a mesh, bring it into there. You 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 can see it's not it's not working yet. And now we can bring in one. And using your shift, your shift button, you can place in two, three, four. And now let's uh, test it out. Oh, of course, we need to uh, turn it on first. All right, and as, you, and as you can see here, we can now make our simple tent. I will now hide this plane here. And as you, and, and as you can see, it's uh, working like so. I'm gonna. Actually, I'm gonna get our plane back here again. And as you can see, if I try to stretch this out, the whole thing will, will, will adapt naturally. And the same thing in this direction, like that. I'm gonna bring it back. Oh. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hide this here. Test it again. And of course, I can also move my point if I need to. that or I can change the uh, plasticity of this by adjusting my value here so the next 10 structure was actually suggested by a fellow subscriber exquisite Macintosh and to start with this one I'm gonna first off set up an arc right here Turn, turn on grid snap and do something like this okay now I will rotate this in 3d bring the axis in like that and let's uh, go to about 90 degrees and uh, after that we can get ourselves a circle let's just close in here on this side I'm gonna give it a radius of about Point one. Okay, now let's do a sweep and looks like the rail first and then the small circle. Enter and enter again. Click OK. And that should do it. Then let's delete this curve here. And uh, now I'm gonna make a polar array. Polar array. Or, or in this case, array polar. The uh, center, I'm going to place it on the on this side uh, here. I'm going to click number of items will will, will be two, and uh, I'm going to bring this to about let's say 45 degrees. Press double enter, and that should do it just about fine. I might just uh, remove this circle here, these two circles, and I will also move this a bit to the side. Okay, should do, should do fine. Okay, now we need to uh, add in three points, so go to multiple points. I'm gonna place these, in, th in this case I, I wanna place this one between the two here, as, it, as in a uh, midpoint. And then over here, place th this one at the center, there. And then the same thing on this one here. Presenter. Okay, now with this set up, we can move into uh, Grasshopper, and uh, we can we can of course reuse some of our uh, components from the uh, previous build. So to start off, let's add in a point, and now let's assign all of our points. Press Enter. Let's also add in a uh, Delaware mesh. 
Not sure I pronounced that one right. And uh, now from uh, Weave from the Weaver Birds, let's get ourselves a uh, split triangles. Let's bring it into there like that, and uh, let's actually pick all of these up. Let's move them slightly over here. Let's bring this one up to the top, and now we can place this one into our mesh, into our um, edge lens, and also into our show. Okay, next up, uh, for the, the, the level here, I'm going to place in a, num a number slider of 30, I'm going to place it in there, here we can see something here all, already, and uh, now I'm going to give myself a divide curve, divide curve, and uh, I will add in also curves here. Actually, I forgot something here on uh, Rhino, so let's uh, pick up a line and uh, let's connect the line that goes from here to about about here. Yeah, that should do it. Just fine. And now, yes, we can select multiple curves. And let's just select our entire build here, like that. And we can then bring it into the divide curves. And um, since this is a triangular form, I want to multiply this by 3. So we're going to add in a, a multiplication. And of course, the dash 3 for our value. Let's join them like this and then place our value into the count. And now we can bring this one into our point. And we can also bring our points into our target. Okay, we can now see, see something here. Let's hide all of these. Like that. Okay, exquisite Macintosh, I hope this uh, design helps you helps you out. That's how you set up an, an arc-based triangular form. So far, we dealt with uh, 2D clocks. Now let, let, let's do a 3D clock example. And to do this, I will start off by setting up a cross-like shape here. So let's go for something like this, like that. Something along the lines of this should work out fine. It, does, it, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, now let's extrude this. So about the same, about the same height. Now we can cap this. Let's explode it. Now we want to remove these uh, squares here or, or rectangles. Okay, and uh, once that's done, we can now join them together again. And now we can go into uh, Grasshopper. Uh, we will be using some some of the elements we've used on our previous build. And uh, let's get ourselves a prep first, and let's assign our new uh, structure here. Next up, let's get ourselves a uh, mesh prep. Let's let's turn it into into there. Now let's get a uh, quad. Divide to make our divisions. Next, we can ourselves a uh, mesh smooth or smooth mesh. Let's connect it into uh, there. Let's bring our our mesh into our uh, edge lens. One into the show, and uh, also one into our naked vertices. Here. And let's bring, of course, our naked points into our points on our angle. Now, to uh, use these, uh, these, these inputs here for this fence, I'm, I'm going to go with, with a number slider of 1.00. And uh, as for the iterations, I'm going to go for a value of maximum 10, since this might be, might be a bit heavy on my uh, computer. But you, but you can go higher if you want. And also, let's invert the skip naked. I will now hide this shape here. And I will also hide all of these, and uh, also I will hide this. And now let's turn 
at the sun and as you can see here our shape is already changing and uh, I can adjust this value here to change it a bit more and uh, yeah that's how you mess around with uh, with a 3d cloth to create membrane like structures for my final example I'll be showing you how to make an umbrella like tensile structure Let's start off with a uh, polygon, make sure it's on 8 sides and we can now use the center here and make sure it's circumscribed, like that, okay. Now let's select this curve, let's click on extrude curve, I'm gonna bring it up to about 45 uh, meters, like that. Now we'll select this and cap it, I'm gonna select the curves down here and bring them up to the, to the top, like that. And uh, now I will be making a door that, that will serve as my, as my umbrella's arm. So I'm gonna bring it to, actually let's turn off the grid snap. So let's bring it to about, about here. That should be fine. Yeah, about, about. I'm gonna bring this down to about uh, midpoint along the pole. Like that, that should be about enough. Uh, now I need to add in a curve in the interior part between the two items, like that. Okay, now moving on to uh, Grasshopper here, we will be once again using most of the elements we've, we've uh, used last time. In this case, however, I want to make a copy of these down, 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 and down here. And now let's move on to assigning all of these elements. So I'm going to start off with a breadth so that we can assign our board here. We uh, won't be needing to assign our, our uh, pole. And next up, I will, get a, I will get myself a curve and assign the curve in there. Okay. Now, I want to rotate this board in 3D so we can place our geometry into there. We can use this curve to serve as our axes and also get myself a uh, curved middle to serve as the center. Like that. Uh, for for the, the angle, let's change it to degrees and uh, to be able to change it, I'm gonna go for 0 to 90 to get a 0 to 90 uh, number slider. Bring it into there and as you can see, here now we can we can make a move. Next up, let's um, let's add in a polar array. Polar array. Let's bring our, our geometry into into there. And uh, in this case, for the plane, we actually want to use our curve up here. So let's assign that too. So select one curve. Bring it into there. Get get ourselves an area. And now we can extract the centroid for our plane. And of course, for the count, since this is an octagon, let's go for double dash eight, since this value will now will now be fixed. Now we can easily move this to create the umbrella's opening effect. I'm gonna select this entire this entire group. I'm gonna name it umbrella structure. Structure. Okay, nice. Moving on. Uh, gonna get myself a uh, rep deconstruct. We want to break this down. And uh, also gonna get a list item for the edges. As as we can see here. The edges that we need are already se selected, so in this case we won't be needing to, to add in any more numbers. However, we will be needing a uh, curved middle, pronounced it correctly this time. Okay, and uh, now I will also get a polyline to connect it into there. Of course, one should flatten this down to be able to, to get the desired the effect. 
and uh, if you see that these lines do not do not close you can simply go into here on your right click button and then set boolean to true you you can also do this uh, manually I, ju I just think that this keeps the drawing far more cleaner and we have the intended result moving on um, we are gonna get ourselves a uh, boundary surface boundary surfaces okay. bring it in like that I actually want to move these guys a bit to the side there and uh, now I'm gonna get myself a surface mesh or mesh surface never get that one, that one right Now, since uh, this is uh, is is an octagon, you always want to uh, add in items that um, are multiples of eight. So to work with with these counts, I'm going to add in a uh, multiplication. I'm going to join it into there on both on both on both occasions. I'm going to place in um, possibly a ten number slider there. I'm going to bring this down to about 2 to not make it too complicated. And uh, also we'll add in a double dash 8 once again to make sure we only work with these kinds of uh, multiples. Okay. Next up, we want to add our, our mesh into our edge lens. We also want to add it into our mesh here. And, and, and as you can see, something is already happening here. However, we can of course make this a lot better. And uh, now we also need to place something into our show, like that. And now we all we just need to use this uh, here. So I will now proceed to hiding all of these elements. And uh, in this case, I want to go back to this curve here. I want to make an explode out of it. I want to explode it. And uh, we'll now connect it into there. Okay, good. We can see our points up here. I'm gonna bring this all the way down here. And now let's add in remove duplicates. Because we're supposed to only have eight vertices in here. There should be about about nine. Not sure. <clears throat> and uh, with this done, now we can place this into the points and into our target down, down here. And uh, up here, we want to uh, pick up on our midpoints. So let me just bring this here. Bring them into the points and into the target. And uh, for the, the case down down here, we uh, want to use the closed points for our for our cloud. But but simply keep these ones as they are. I'm gonna hide this. And now something should happen once I click this. Something is missing. Let's see what let's see what it is. Okay. Actually, this one should should remain visible since uh, we need to have our arms visible. <laughs> I forgot to connect my uh, anchor points. Okay, yeah. Now, now it's uh, it's uh, working. All right. Okay. So make sure you don't you don't stretch these out too uh, too much because at some point they can become a bit uh, deformed. But yeah, as you can see here, you can easily adjust and uh, transform your intended uh, umbrella system. Okay, okay, guys. So hope you've liked this uh, tutorial, and um, please do not forget to like and uh, subscribe. It really, really helps me keep these uh, videos going. And uh, I hope to see you back here next time. Cheers.